On the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield, this is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Big Ten Conference. Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Shields, we're right there with you in Des Moines, Sioux City, Iowa City, and Cedar Falls. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. The allurement of the NBA was great for Peyton Sanford, and why not? Sanford, Iowa basketball's leading scorer last season, was convinced he'd have been drafted this summer but felt there was enough work yet to be done with his game that another year of seasoning in the Big Ten was warranted. The Hawkeyes are excited to welcome him back. What went into Peyton Sanford's decision to return to college for his senior season? That's coming up on this week's Fight for Iowa podcast, courtesy of Shields, UIHC, Athletico, and Iowa Corn. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at UIHC.org. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash fan of corn. Tickets are on sale now for the high V IndyCar Race Weekend Concert Series. Saturday, July 13th, see Luke Combs and Eric Church. And Sunday, July 14th, see Post Malone and Kelsey Ballerini live in concert. One ticket per day gets you into a race and two concerts. Tickets on sale now at HyVIndyCarWeekend.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Iowa guard forward Peyton Sanford enjoyed a breakout season in 2023, leading the Hawkeyes, scoring 16.5 points a game, while collaring 6.5 rebounds on average. A 45% shooter, Sanford led the Big Ten with 94 made three-point goals and shot 90% at the foul line. Those eye-popping stats caught the attention of a number of pro teams, so Sanford wisely tested the pre-draft waters. In the end, Sanford says his heart is in Iowa City, wanting to play with younger brother Price for one more year. The journey this spring took Sanford from training camp in Newark, New Jersey, to competition in Los Angeles. The Waukee native got a ton of positive feedback and suggestions for improvement, especially at the defensive end of the court. Um, just talking to a lot of people around the league, you know, there was a lot of good things. Had some good workouts, you know, didn't perform the best at the combine, but it wasn't the best, you know, really setting to showcase my game anyways. So um, no one really, you know, cared all that much. But um, a ton of it was, you know, continued, um, just Im- improved athleticism, mobility, strength, um, all that types of stuff. And then, you know, that would translate to better defensively, uh, you know, being more physical and, um, you know, just overall expanding the game with that athleticism. Um, but, you know, there was a lot of teams that were very interested um, in the middle and the end of the second round that, um, you know, I, I, without a doubt, I think I would have been drafted. But, 
you know, it's just trying to get yourself into the right situation. I think, you know, that was the biggest thing that I personally learned was being ready to make that jump, um, which, you know, I was, but ultimately I think, you know, it would have been hard for me to, you know, live the rest of my life knowing that I turned down another year with my brother and another year with, you know, college still on the table and, um, you know, a chance to, you know, have a really special season with a really good team. A lot of it, you know, is, is about your body, you know, how you can move your core strength, how you can hold up when, you know, people are being physical and you're running through all these different screens. But a lot of that just comes with, you know, continued time and, and learning everything. And, you know, every guy that goes into the NBA has to make that jump defensively because you're going against the best players in the world with the most talent. And you can play the best defense possible and they're still going to score, you know, 25, 30 a game. So uh, a ton of it's just learning schemes, um, learning how to be physical, which, you know, coming into college, you know, I wasn't really ready defensively for college ball, but then over the past couple of years, you know, I've really developed that side of the ball and um, I've become like a, you know, a strong college defender and um, just going to that NBA is a whole nother jump. Um, and, you know, guys struggle with it all the time, but um, you know, what they really look for in the process is, you know, through the interviews, you know, and talking to people from your past, you know, knowing that you're willing to learn, knowing that you're willing to, you know, commit to getting better because that's kind of what they look for. Cause guys that, aren't all that coachable, just kind of, even if they're, you know, a really good defender, or a really good player, um, they can kind of fizzle out because you have to get so much better when you do make that jump. Major League Baseball, uh, the NHL, uh, the NFL, it's it's also about getting with the right team, the right system uh, where, where you know you can play. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's such a big thing. And um, for a lot of the guys that, you know, have stuck around in the league for a long time, it's going into that right situation. You know, there's so many good basketball players in the world and the G league is full of guys that were absolute stars in college and guys that are absolutely phenomenal basketball players. So there's good players everywhere. And, and you mean, know, even overseas, um, ton of good Hawkeyes have been like legends overseas, but there's great players everywhere. And, um, that's why, you know, sticking to the NBA is such a, you have to, I mean, you have to be phenomenal, but you have to also get a little bit lucky. So, you know, finding a team that loves you, that is a perfect fit is such a hard thing to do. And, um, you know, you, you do need a, a good chance and a good system that fits you well. Yeah, it was good. You know, the combine, I didn't shoot it very well. Um, it was just a little jittery. I was excited. and um, But at some <laughs> of the workouts, you know, you, you shoot all different sorts of shots. You shoot usually 100 threes at all the workouts and then play a bunch of one-on-one, three-on-three. And um, I would say probably four out of the six workouts, I shot it really well. Um, but there's so many shots that eventually it just kind of averages out to how good of a shooter you really are, which you know, really benefited me in a lot of these workouts that I was doing for teams. Well, I'm sure they all had tape of that triple double, the first in <laughs> Iowa men's basketball history uh, yeah. earlier uh, or uh, during the, the season a year ago. Uh, and I know that gave you a, a huge boost in confidence uh, at both mm-hmm. ends of the floor. And for now it's, it's a new look roster. I mean, Tony Perkins most notably uh, left, but uh, the coaching staff uh, working their tails off have brought in, two really solid players and say do Traore and uh, Drew Thelwell. Uh, but let's talk about the returnees first uh, in Hawkeye uniforms that that freshman class, which includes your brother a year ago, really matured nicely. You know, it's tough. Uh, this on the job training in the big 10 is not easy, but uh-huh. uh, with the uh, Lodgy uh, Dembele, uh, uh, big 10, six man or freshman of the year, Owen Freeman, uh, your brother uh, price and Brock Harding, uh, the future literally is bright. Yeah, you know, it was with, with the portal nowadays, everything's changing so much that, you know, it was really good for us to to get all those guys back because they're all going to be so special. And I can go through them. You know, Owen, you know, worked so hard in the offseason, came in and really impressed me right away. So, you know, I think he's going to he's going to make a huge jump. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people say he had a great spring and, um, you know, we're going to keep working with him on, you know, things he needs to work on. But, you know, I, I would expect him to have a really good year and an all Big Ten type year. Um, you know, price at the end of the year was started to get, you know, better and better and more comfortable. And, um, he's a really good defender. And I don't think a lot of people know that, but he can also do a ton of things, play, play point guard, play off guard, um, shoot it well. Um, so I'm really excited about that. You know, um, Brock is, you saw what he could do last year. He had a double, double, he's a great leader. And I think that'll be really beneficial for us, you know, lead alongside me. And, um, that's kind of what you need from that point guard spot. So he's going to have a huge impact. Um, he's a phenomenal you know, player with, with great passion for the game, which always translates well and does so many things well that, you know, he's going to have a great season. And then, you know, Lodge, you kind of see what, saw what he did too, you know, great rebounder. And um, I mean, he's going to be special. I've thought that from the beginning, uh, 
it, it seems like he's still kind of learning the game and you know the way that he played this year while doing all that learning how to play in the big 10 was special and then you know adding to that class and i don't know if i can talk about him yet but um i mean it, i think we added the the kid from manhattan i think you know he'll be a I, I don't know much about him, but I've heard a lot of good things, so I guess we'll see. How encouraging was it, uh, how uh, heartwarming was it to see Josh Dix uh, have, uh, you know, that terrible uh, uh, broken leg uh, his senior year in high school, kind of felt his way along as a freshman and then had a breakout season in his sophomore year. Uh, I don't want to say he's the X factor, but but he's he's pretty close. I think, you know, I'm not even worried about him becoming the player that I know he's going to be because, you know, he's just so consistent and such a lethal shooter, great defender, can pass it, can do all sorts of things. And, you know, I was sitting there like last year, you know, just thinking his run was going to happen and, you know, talk to him about it, you know, and he's he's a very good, very, very good ball player. So, you know, I'm excited about him, you know, texted him when I came back that, um, you know, this isn't, this isn't me coming back shouldn't stop what you're supposed to do this year like i need you to go out become you know that all big 10 guy and um i th- yeah I, yeah he will he will I'm not worried about him and we don't want to we don't want to lose sight of the fact i haven't forgotten about Koch and tajo uh, uh the the newbies uh coming in you were there once uh, uh you got to be excited about their uh, abilities uh, their potential uh, what they bring to the table yeah, you know, Cooper's been around a lot. Uh, his dad obviously played for Iowa, and, you know, he, he always wanted to be a Hawk, so I'm super excited to have him. I've heard great things, you know, seeing the film. He looks like he's going to fit in well, and uh, it'll be nice for him, you know, this summer to, to get adjusted and uh, for us to see what he can do. But, you know, I would definitely expect him to have an immediate impact on this team, uh, especially the way that, you know, it sounds like he can shoot the ball and from what I've seen. And then um, Chris, I obviously, you know, haven't seen a ton, but uh, what I have seen, what I've heard, and, when, when he did come on his visit, he's a great kid. And, um, you know, it's really easy to work with guys that want to be there and want to work hard and uh, want to be great teammates. And, you know, that's kind of what's re- had had our program running successful for so long. So really excited about both of them, uh, excited to see how they fit in and would expect both of them to, you know, contribute in big ways this year. It's amazing when you think that the league now touches both coasts with uh, Rutgers and Maryland on one side and, and at the <laughs> other end, you've got Oregon and Washington and, uh, you know, hallowed programs like USC and UCLA. Um, you know, I think we're fortunate with where we're located in Iowa being in the center of it. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the travel really isn't a big deal and they make things pretty convenient for us. So um, it'll be fun. You know, a lot of tradition coming into the league, good challenges. And um, I'm I'm really excited, you know, for the new challenges. And um, But I, I know our team's going to be good and we're going to be right back, you know, where we want to be in the top of the league and hopefully, you know, fighting for championship. Peyton Sanford scored double figures in 27 of Iowa's 34 games last season, including his 28-10-10 triple-double versus Penn State. At 6'7", 215 pounds, Sanford played four positions and likes being interchangeable. More a shooting guard or a small forward, Coach Fran McCaffrey is just happy he's back, understanding what great teammates bring to the table. The 35th Hall of Fame class has been announced by the Iowa Letter Winners Club and Athletics Department. To be inducted at FryFest and opening football weekend are from football Sean Green and Adrian Claiborne, basketball's Lindsey Meter and Kevin Coonert, baseball great Mike Boddicker, Sue Burry of field hockey, wrestling's Rico Ciparelli, and tennis star Laura Dvorak. The induction ceremony is open to the public and is held in the Feller Room of Carver Hawkeye Arena. Speaking of Hall of Famers, we note with sadness the passing of Carl Kane, who led the Hawkeyes to -to back-to-back Final Fours in 1955 and 56. The Freeport, Illinois native was a big part of 56 victories, 35 of those in the Big Ten, and two conference titles. Kane was an All-American three times all Big Ten, and a member of the gold medal winning basketball team in Melbourne. Kane's number 21 is retired. Carl Kane was 89. Sympathies to the Carl Kane family. That's it for this week's Fight for Iowa podcast. I'm Gary Dolphin. We'll be back next week with another edition. Go Hawks! You've been listening to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Hawkeye fans, remember to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. Once you become a Fight for Iowa podcast subscriber, you'll automatically receive the latest episodes of the Fight for Iowa podcast. 
the Hawkeye Women Rise podcast, Hawk Talk replays, exclusive game content, and more. Until next time, on Iowa and go Hawks. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.